It's hard to believe that just 20 years ago, less than 1% of the world's population was using the internet. Today, 45% of people worldwide are internet users. A large part of this explosive growth can be attributed to social media. Facebook began in 2004 and now has 1.44 billion active users. More recently, Twitter, which launched in 2006, has already grown to 302 million users. The internet connects everyone, everywhere, and has become the biggest forum by which people express their ideas and opinions. It has become the world's largest information portal. Unfortunately, this realm of information exchange has also led to the rise of cyberbullying. Join us as we take a visit to Yonsei University to talk with Professor Hee Kim about his findings on cyberbullying. So I worked on a cyberbullying issue. So cyberbullying is a very common these days and very serious problem. For example, a 12-year-old girl in U.S. committed suicide after being targeted uh, for cyberbullying. And also in Singapore, about 60% of students, they have experienced cyberbullying. And also in Korea, about 20% of whole internet users, they have experienced cyberbullying. According to the Cyberbullying Research Center, 25% of teenagers report experiencing repeated cyberbullying via cell phone or over the internet. 55% of all teens who use social media have witnessed bullying on such platforms. 95% of teens who witness bullying on social media ignore the behavior. For this reason, there are several anti-cyberbullying campaigns all around the world. And the key motivation of these anti-cyberbullying is not just to, to stop posting negative and malicious comments, but also to motivate people to post positive and benevolent comments online. Actually, there have been several uh, studies on uh, cyberbullying, actually, but most of them they examined, they focused on some conceptual clarifications and case studies of cyberbullying. But our study is somewhat different uh, in terms of the finding the reasons and also finding the problems and finding some possible solutions for their cyberbullying issues. In conducting their study, Professor Hyun Kim and fellow researcher So Hyun Lee interviewed over 100 participants who use the internet on a daily basis. In contrast to previous studies that focused on the experiences of primary and secondary school students, the participants in Kim and Lee's study ranged from students to adults in their 50s, giving a broader representation of user experiences. People, they um, uh, answer that, that they post uh, negative and malicious comments to resolve their feeling of dissatisfaction. And some people, because of the poor self-control, and some people, just for fun. And as for positive, benevolent comments, people, they post because to help and encourage others and some people to actualize society's good, and some people because of the self-satisfaction. Of the users that posted benevolent comments, 7% did so to actualize the good of society, 11% to support other benevolent comments, 21% to provide advice or help, and 36% to gain self-satisfaction. Among users that posted malicious comments, 8% to support other malicious comments, 15% posted due to low self-esteem, 20% due to hostility, and 28% were attempting to resolve feelings of dissatisfaction. We found that the how to handle or many such issues is not just a matter of all individual person. Not only the person, people, but also schools and government and also IT companies, especially SNS providers, they have to work together to manage such cyberbullying issues. Learn more about the study and how to address the problem of malicious comments in the November 2015 communications of the ACM in the contributed article, Why People Post Benevolent and Malicious Comments Online. <laughs>